Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope everyone can hear me okay, and I'd like to welcome you all. Um, firstly, I'd love to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands from which we're all calling from today. In my case, that's the lands of the Warami and Awabakal people um, up here in beautiful, sunny Newcastle, even though it's June. Um, I'd like to pay my respects to elders past and present of these lands, but also pay my extend those respects to any First Nations peoples here today, as well as acknowledging the lands from which you're all calling from. I know that some of my PRF colleagues are calling from the lands of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and also the lands of the Wurundjeri and Woiwurrung people of the Kulin Nation down in Nam as well. So just want to acknowledge that land was never ceded and it always was and always will be Aboriginal land. And I also want to thank you all for coming today. I can't see exactly, oh yes I can, how many people have come here today and it, the number keeps increasing. So uh, so great to see everyone here today. Um, I'm really excited about the interest already expressed in our open grant round. So I just wanted to give you some context um, on PRF and our team and, and why we are doing this open grant round. Um, this webinar is just to provide some practical advice on how you'll apply, um, how what that EOI process looks like, um, and then we'll go into questions and answers. Um, because there are so many of us here today, and those numbers just keep going up, um, we are all muted um, and we have disabled the chat function just to keep things to time and to make sure that um, information is streamlined for you all. Um, but you will see a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, hopefully, um, and that way you can submit your questions on, on this webinar at any time during the session, so don't be shy. Um, there's also a function to be able to like a question if you think there's a question there that you want to ask that's already been asked. And that way we can see how many people are interested in a specific question. I will note though that um, we're taking questions more about the process rather than specific applications. Um, and that way, um, if you do have specific questions about an application or a specific initiative that you're running, um, do that through the hello at prf.au email address um, and we'll type that into the chat function for you all as well. Okay. Um, so the session is being recorded. It's another thing I had to say to you all today. <laughs> and um, just to let you know that that's happening, if you do... Um, decide that you don't want to be recorded, um, just make sure to let us know. Uh, but the webinar itself will be recorded, so um, make sure to take your video off if that's the case. Okay, so I'd firstly like to introduce our wonderful Head of Measurement, Evaluation, Research and Learning, George Agaros. He's here today, as well as Virginia Poggio, um, a fellow male associate of mine, um, to talk you through the webinar and to give you a bit of background as well as to why we're doing this. I don't think we'll be sharing the recording. I'm not sure. Or we might be. But the we'll recording get back will to be you. Um, posted in our website. Um, oh, fantastic. Our cool. Um, thank you, anonymous attending. <laughs> um, okay, wonderful. So firstly, George and Virginia have done an amazing amount of work, as well as Kathy, who you might see um, working in the background as well on this open grant round. And we're really excited to share this with you. So without further ado, I will pass to George, who will take you through thanks, um, thanks. the first bit. Yeah, um, just we're, we're going to try and do a little bit of background and information, but we're aware the EOI has been posted and I, I assume most, if not all of you have looked over it. So we're not gonna to take too much time talking. We're gonna give you as much opportunity to ask your questions uh, so we can address them. Um, but just to go over that, a, a quick introduction to the Open Grant Round um, and also PRF. Um, uh, so you may be aware we've just relaunched our strategy. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, ready. Um, the foundation has a, has this broad mission of a future where people and places have what they need to thrive. Very ambitious uh, a goal. Within that, all the initiatives we're, we're, that will be 
for the evaluation for which will be funded here, need to align in some way with our strategy. So as part of your work in thinking about whether to apply and how to apply, I, I would encourage you to go to the PRF website and see the information about our new strategy and the alignment of your initiative with, with that strategy. Um, why are we doing this? Well, in there, there, we think that there are some myths around experimental evaluations that we want to challenge. Um, uh, um, one of them is that they're very costly and will need you know, budgets of over a million dollars to do an experimental evaluation. We don't think that's necessarily the case. And that's why we've restricted the total funding for the evaluation to a maximum of $300,000. There's still a significant amount, but much lower than the threshold that most people think is needed for an experimental evaluation. There's also a perception that experimental evaluations require considerable amounts of time, five years or more, to be able to make the judgments, evaluative judgments that they, they try to make. We think that's, again, not necessarily the case, and that's why we restricted the, the funding to um, initiatives that will show some demonstrable impact or not um, within three years. Um, there's also a perception that in areas of social impact aligned with PRS mission, experimental evaluations are somehow unethical. And I know that's a big debate about this. We think it is possible to do experimental evaluations in areas of social, social impact that are ethically uh, informed and conform to all the appropriate ethical and cultural sensitive standards. So they're, they're the main reasons for this round and for the characteristics of the open ground there, the amount of time, the focus of the initiatives and the amount we're funding. There's three stages to this. We're currently in the first stage, which, which is the expressions of interest. It opened last week. It closes on July 23, um, and we'll have a decision in August based on those. Um, it's already exciting to see through our system we are getting a large number of EOIs. Um, based on those EOIs, we will then move to the full application process, uh, which will be a much more rigorous and intensive process, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. The main distinction is at, in the EOI stage, we really want people to apply, even if they're not experts in evaluation, even if they're not sure. So the level of evaluation knowledge is not as high in the expressions of interest stage. We're more interested in getting, getting interesting proposals for initiatives that are aligned with our mission. Um, we ask for information that doesn't require expertise to complete and that will give us a sense of the likelihood of those uh, initiatives being uh, amenable to an experimental evaluation. And depending on that, some of those EOIs will progress to the full application. We will support those full applications. We have a team of expert evaluation advisors and they will work with you to make sure they meet all our minimum standards. Another distinction between those two stages I think is important. We don't expect you to know a lot about evaluation in the EOI stage. It's more we're interested in your initiative, your program. In the full application stage, you probably will need to partner up with someone or, or some organisation that has expertise in experimental evaluations. But if you want to bring them in to the EOI stage, the earlier the better, absolutely, that would be great. But you're really not, ex if you don't know, you don't have someone like that, you shouldn't feel you can't get it, put an EOI in. In the application stage, stage two, we will actually help for those who don't know or don't can't identify potential evaluation partners to work with, we have a list of those and we will do a bit of matchmaking for with you if, if you don't know any. So again, don't feel like you shouldn't put an EOI in because you don't have an, an evaluation nerd already in, that you, you can work with. Um, then based on those full applications and the dates are there, up to seven grants will actually be awarded. Um, so it is a limited number, especially given the, the level of interest we're seeing, um, and it's important for us to be honest and open about the, the level of interest, but the limited number that we will fund in the end. And I'll hand over to Virginia to discuss in more detail what a good initiative looks like. 
Thank you, George. Um, as Just as a reminder, if you are starting to have questions already, please submit them using the Q&A button that you will see at the bottom of your screen. And at the end of the session, we will have a lot of time to go over those. Um, and we will also share ways to connect with us after this webinar. So now I will get into the details um, and we'll describe specifically what types of interventions or programs would be a really good fit for this grant round. We do have a few requirements for organizations to be able to apply to this grant round. First of all, your organization needs to be an incorporated non-for-profit entity. We go into more details in the guidelines in our website, um, but at a high level, this means that your organization must be registered as a charity with the ACNC. We cannot give grants to for-profit entities, um, and usually universities are um, ACNC registered, so that includes universities. The second item is that your organization needs to have a social impact mission that is aligned with PRF's mission of breaking cycles of disadvantage. Um, the other item is that your organization does need to be based in and serve communities in Australia. And finally, you need to have existing funding for implementing your intervention. And in the form, we will ask um, that you provide some um, supporting documentation to um, justify the, the way you have secured funding for implementing the intervention. Um, the funds for this grant are only available to cover the costs of the evaluation, but not to cover the cost of the program or the intervention. Now, um, things that make your intervention a good candidate, um, we do ask that you have significant measurable outcomes that are expected to materialize within three years. So for example, if your program delivers a teacher training to improve kids' learning outcomes, um, for example, like reading fluency, your program is a good candidate for this grand round if you expect that the full impact on reading fluency will happen within three years of having worked with the teachers in their training. Um, and I will close this slide by saying that even if you have no prior experience with evaluation, you can still be a great candidate for this grant. For the expression of interest stage, we don't really need you to go into any specifics for evaluation, as George has mentioned. We do encourage you to submit an expression of interest. And if you are successful, we will help you find an evaluation partner. And we will also provide evaluation support as you fill out the full application. Next slide, please. Perfect. Now I will talk about what makes a great expression of interest or what we will be looking for. First of all, um, in your expression of interest, it will help us a lot if you can be very clear on what your intervention is. For example, a good concise description of a program can be a literacy program for children aged three to five, providing families with weekly reading materials, interactive reading sessions at local community centers, and training parents and caregivers on effective reading techniques to use at home. That would be great. We do know that not all interventions can be summarized this easily, but the clearer you can be, the easier it will be for us to understand what you're doing. Second, it will also be really helpful for us if you can be very clear in the description of the outcomes of your intervention. So this is the main result from your intervention. And for example, in that previous early literacy, literacy example that I was just talking about, the intervention outcome would be the early literacy skills of the children that participate in your program. Third, we will also read with interest which research questions or the issue you plan to answer with the evaluation of the program or the intervention. Um, you'll see in the application form, which again, you can find linked in our website, there will be a list of research questions that we are particularly interested in answering. They're all listed in there, but they're organized around some key themes. Um, they are children and early years, economic opportunity, and young people and families. But if your intervention or your program doesn't really fit neatly into any of those issues or questions, don't worry. You can still um, propose your own research question in a free text box. And the clearer you can be about this research question, the better for us. The final um, 
recommendation for a strong expression of interest is um, that you describe the mechanism for recruiting and retaining participants very clearly. Um, for example, you might be able to describe your existing relationships with the community. Um, maybe you are sending tailored invitations to potential participants to encourage their participation. Um, maybe you have a referral program or you're partnering with local organizations. All those are very um, interesting for us to, to know about. Um, and maybe for retention of participants, maybe you have check-ins with them, you collect their feedback. Um, it will be very useful for us to know about that too. These are just examples. We're keen to hear from you on how you go about recruiting and retaining participants. Um, but just as a reminder, with experimental evaluation, it's usually useful to have lots of people interested in the program um, or even a wait list. Um, although that is absolutely not a requirement to participate in this uh, grant run. So again, if you have questions, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen and we will get to them next. Over to you, Bernie. Thanks so much, Virginia and George. Um, and I can see a wonderful amount of questions coming in the chat box now. I think the one that I'll first do is define what we mean by experimental, because I think that's probably a really important one for us because, you know, there are lots of different definitions out there. George? Yeah, I've already answered some in the in the Q&A, but oh, we, uh, um, basically there has to be some randomization into a, a, a intervention group, possibly into a control group, or where we define experiment. There's, there's a lot of variation within the experimental design framework, but there has to be some randomization into groups that will be compared. Sometimes that's a classic control treatment group, but it could be groups with different types or levels of intervention. But the key component is that there has to be randomization. Um, someone asked, does quasi-experiments fit in? The answer is no. Um, you can do as long, you can do a experimental evaluation as long as it also has an experimental component defined by that element of randomization. So we're encouraging hybrid evaluations that include different designs, but as long as this, the main design is experimental. Similarly, someone asked about meta-evaluation of previous experiments. Again, unfortunately, the answer is no there. Um, there has to be a primary evaluation that includes an experimental component with randomization as its uh, primary focus. Thanks, George. I have another question here that relates more to the process. Um, how many projects do you expect will be shortlisted for full application? Going to the hard ones. <laughs> uh, we have no predefined number, but given the, the amount of work we expect to be involved in putting a full application, we don't want a lot because that will mean a lot of them do a lot of work with no rewards. So we're anticipating up to 15 or 20 will go through to the application stage. Um, and again, that's just for us to be honest with you so you can think about the value of the work involved um, relative to the, the, the um, chance of, of success. And relating to that, um... One attendee has asked if we could please clarify the eligibility criteria for organisations to have, in quotes, a social impact mission relevant to breaking cycles of disadvantage set out in your governing documents. So one of the links that we might be able to provide you in this chat will be our strategy or you can just find it on our website. Um, that gives a bit more detail as to what we mean by kind of working towards our strategy. Um, but, George, do you have any other views on how we might kind of order that eligibility or focus? Yeah, we, we've got some questions, research questions. I know there's a, a question in there about the research or evaluation questions. We're using those a bit interchangeably. Um, we've got some listed in the guidelines that we think are of particular interest to us, but don't feel restricted just to those. Um, as We're defining social impact fairly broadly um, it's basically benefiting the lives of people who are uh, suffering or may experience entrenched disadvantage. Um, they've got to be a primary focus, not just an incident, incidental subgroup. Um, but within that, there's a fairly wide area of um, fields where, where your initiative could 
good place. But again, as you say, have a look at our strategy on the PRF's website, see what, what our strategy is and, and the initiative. Um, it's the whether the initiative aligns with that, even if your organisation as such doesn't have that as its stated objectives or, or within um, it, uh, its mission. Yeah, fantastic. Um, there's a couple of questions that relate to um, the evaluator partnering and those sorts of things. So I might bundle them together. Sure. Um, so the first one is about, can you submit an EOI joint with an evaluator and split the cost? Um, um, yeah, look, that's, 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 we, we, we can't grant to a, a, a for-profit body. So all the grant money has to go to a not-for-profit organisation that meets the characteristics that Virginia uh, laid out. But given that, you, the money can then flow up through subcontracts with you to evaluation partners that are for-profit organisations. Um, so that's certainly a, a model we anticipate existing, but we can't split the grant half to you, half to a for-profit evaluation partner. And relating to that, um, can you choose an evaluator to be someone already closely related to the intervention? Yeah, but that would make perfect sense. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and just to elaborate on that as well, um, and what George said at the start around what kind of the matching process might be, um, I noticed there are a couple of evaluators on here. So um, hopefully you've seen um, an email sent out where I've asked, we've asked questions about whether you have got um, expertise on experimental methods in evaluation. And so we'll be doing our matchmaking based on that list. Um, so feel free to also email um, if you're specifically an evaluator interested in being a part of that matchmaking process um, through that hello at PRF email address as well. Um, but it does make sense that if you do know someone or there has been an evaluator previously engaged with your intervention, absolutely welcome to um, kind of partner with them on a content perspective. But as George said, the grant will go to um, the, the charity with DGR status. Can I add then, Laura, equally, if there is online for-profit organisations, so uh, an evaluation consultancy firm, um, one thing you might, if you're aware of a not-for-profit you've worked with in the past or is delivering initiatives and you think it would be a great initiative for them to apply for and you would partner with them, I would strongly encourage you to seek them out and have that discussion and, and see if you can help them put in their EOI on, and what, under whatever understanding you want to form with them that um, you'll go together on this. But again, the EOI itself and the application has to come from that um, uh, not-for-profit organisation. Yeah, lovely. Okay, I'm just scrolling through to make sure that I'm bucketing these questions in a way that makes sense. I think there's there's one here about ethics and for community organisations, what guidance will be provided on managing an ethical experiment? What might be examples for the difference in treatment? Look, uh and that will depend on this. Uh, I can't give you an answer to that. It depends on the. I, I'm precluding something like that. It would be actually be very interesting to see if if uh, experimental methods can be applied to that kind of context. We are actually interested in, in some unusual or, or or application of experimental designs in areas we didn't anticipate. Um, but without knowing the detail, I probably can't give you. Um, much more than that, but just to say we'd, we'd be curious to see if that's possible. Yeah, lovely. And that relates to a question here around just providing a couple more exam examples of the types of initiatives we might fund. Um, Virginia, do you have maybe some more examples that you can describe to us to help people get a better idea? Yes, happy to do that. Um, so as I was just telling you, I maybe it would be useful to refer back to the list of um, key issues or questions that we um, would like to focus on, noting that these are not are required and it's not an extensive list, but some are um, within the children and early years issues. Um, we'd be curious to learn from initiatives that involve both the primary caregiver and the child 
during the antenatal and post-birth period to reduce caregiver stress and improve skill development. Initiatives that try to get children, in, particularly in regional and remote communities, into high quality early childhood education and care settings. Initiatives that support cohorts with complex out-of-school challenges to stay connected to education. Um, initiatives that improve education outcomes for young people with disabilities. Um, and we're also keen to explore the question of whether school meal initiatives have an impact on student engagement, attendance, and achievement. Then in the area of economic opportunity, some questions we have um, are, what's the relative effect effectiveness for unemployed people across a range of outcomes between non-traditional pathways, such as social enterprise versus mainstream employment pathways? Another question is, what's the effect of uh, unemployment outcomes and incentives from income supports to unemployed people? Uh, another one is, what are the employment outcomes for initiatives that are an alternative to the disability employment sector? And for young people and families, some questions we've thought of are, how effective are diversion and post-release uh, through care models for reducing young people or young parents' contact with the justice system? How effective are community-led youth-focused initiatives in reducing youth contact with the justice system? And what domestic and family violence service models might work to support two members of a family at any point across the prevention crisis continuum to strengthen family cohesion? Again, those are some um, issues and questions that we have thought of and would like to see answered through these evaluations, but they are not an extensive list. And we do encourage you to submit your own questions or issues in the free text form in the, um, in the form to submit your expression of interest. Um, Bernie, there's also been some questions about the budget and if there's yes. already existing money. Um, Certainly, if you already have an evaluation and you have an evaluation or and or an evaluation budget, the grant can top up or add to that evaluation budget, but the total from all sources cannot exceed three hundred thousand dollars. That's because one of the points we're trying to make through this open grant round is to show that about experimental evaluations can be done on a reasonable budget. So um, yes, certainly you can apply for a top up amount if you like or. Uh, a significant top up, but the total from all sources, including this grant, cannot exceed three hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, lovely. Thanks, George. Um, there's questions here that relate to universities as well, so I might bundle them together. Let's, um, let's, yeah. <laughs> Don't you get answer them, George? So we've got one that's about um, can a not for profit department or space um that works under it auspices of a university. Um, so asking that question about who's eligible. Um, there's also a question around, can universities submit more than one project for consideration in the EOI round? Yeah, so first thing, yeah, any organisation can submit more than one uh, application based on the number of initiatives they think uh, are amenable to experimental evaluation. Um, all universities are registered as ACNC charities, so are eligible to apply. So we can grant directly to universities and then you can work out within the university. So that's certainly open open to, to that. Yeah, lovely. Um, and there's a couple of questions about data here. And I wonder, Veer, if you might be able to answer these. Um, there's a question around data that's already been collected, um, as well as a question relating to um, just what pilot data might be required or initiative data? Yeah, great question. Um, certainly having existing data collected can inform us the forming of a strong baseline to compare to some results in the future. But this is, again, some not something that we are requiring from programs to have. If you have zero evaluation done to your program, or even if your program is still not being implemented, you can still submit an expression of interest and tell us of your plans. Um, and we will help you, well, we will first um, 
examine all expressions of interest to see which ones are the most suitable for, for this grant. But then if you're successful, we will help you um, by pairing you up with an external evaluation provider if you don't have contact with one yet. And, and we will also provide a bit of evaluation advice and support for the application process. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, there's also a question relating to effect sizes and how can we ensure a demonstrable effect size in the EOI? I'm not even sure that you could <laughs> ensure that. No, not, not in the EOI. You just have to uh, make some claim that it is reasonable to see effect sizes. So if, if your, your outcome is student learning outcomes, um, however defined, you should be able to see or make observe a real difference in those learning outcomes within three years. Yeah, yeah. So just to um maybe provide a bit of peace for all the participants, most of what you need to submit at the expression of interest stage is what was covered in this session today. We are not going to ask that you submit any minimum defect effect size or power calculation or any um, methodological considerations at this point. So it's just um, to hear from your organization and how it fits within our eligibility criteria and about your intervention um, and how it, it can produce measurable um, outcomes within the three years um, that this grant will last. Um Bernie, I might also jump in and say the idea. So there was a question about where the idea for this all came from, and this the idea from this came from um, something similar that's being done in the US by the Arnold, Arnold Ventures Foundation. Um, so we, we're replicating exactly the kind of open grant run that the Arnold Ventures Foundation, and I strongly encourage people to look at their website and what they've done and the examples of things they've funded and the types of experiments that have been done. It's all published, it's all available. I think that would be a very useful resource for people to look at as well. Uh, could, could you repeat that foundation, George? It's called the Arnold Ventures Foundation. I'll try and type it into that question. There's a question there. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, um, I'm just trying to bundle these questions. They're all fantastic and keep them coming, everyone. Um, there are a couple that are a little bit more specific to a particular intervention. So I'll take those as we will respond to those in time, but just to make sure that we're trying to keep the questions as general as possible. Um, one of the questions here is, will you be encouraging evaluations that work cross-sectorally between multiple organizations? George? Oh, we're not encouraging it, but we're not dis we're not saying they're not eligible. Uh, we're indifferent to that arrangement. So whatever the the partnership arrangements among the organisations delivering the initiative and the organisations doing the evaluation, um, we're we're perfectly open to whatever arrangement works for you. Yeah, lovely. And there's a question here about whether there's, there'll be an opportunity to reapply if you're not selected. Look, at, the, at this point, we're only anticipating a first, a single round, open grant round. I, I can't dismiss the possibility that, that we might do it again next year or sometime in the future, especially given the interest. But at this point, we only have a commitment from our board to do this once. And I can imagine with the, the number of EOIs that we're already getting, there's probably going to be a lot that are eligible and a lot that makes sense. So we're, we will have to narrow it down in some ways, but we won't be able to know how we'll narrow that down until we get all of the expressions of interest and look at them um, as a whole. So while that doesn't provide additional information for you, it does potentially give us context. Um, there's a question here about randomization, um, particularly, oh, I lost it, hang on, it's just jumped out. Oh, it's, it was, I think it was relating to the example that you gave here at the start 
around randomization and how that might look for the early literacy program. If you could just give us an example of that. Sure. Um, so for example, as I was just saying, say you have a lot of interest in your program, but you have limited resources, meaning that you have a hundred people in a wait list, um, but you only have sort resources to provide the program or the intervention to 50, then you would basically toss a coin to determine who in the list of a hundred people who are interested, um, which of uh, which 50 will get the intervention and maybe you can face um, the intervention uh, for the remaining 50 to be delivered after the three year period happens. So it's basically, I mean, the broad definition, I think we all learned at, at university for those of us who studied this is any pot potential participant has an equal chance of being in either in any of the groups um, that will be form the comparisons. So it's an equal probability of inclusion in one group or the others. Yeah, lovely. Um, I hope that starts to answer a little bit more about these questions and how it, how it might relate to experimental design. Um, There's a couple of questions was... here about First Nations that I think is worth addressing. Laura, if I can... Yeah, yeah go for it. Certainly the one on... Um, there's no reason why we haven't um, included a First Nation specific evaluation question in that list that uh, Virginia read out. But obviously, given PRF's mission and we have a, a, a core uh, foundation level outcome around First Nations self determination, um, any application of those general research questions, First Nations uh, specific contexts are very much encouraged um, and, and would certainly be of great interest. Um, in fact, what, we have a, a team of evaluation experts that will help any applicants where there's a relevance to First Nation communities who are not only First Nations researchers themselves, but also have expertise in experimental methods. Um, so we're anticipating and really hoping to have First Nations relevant initiatives uh, involved in this. Um, but in terms of the holistic nature of the First Nations intervention, yeah, uh, I, I, obviously, there, there might be issues or, or thing, or, but as I said, we'll try and work through those in the application stage. Um, so don't discount putting an EOI in at this point if you if you think there's a bit of a grey area around that. George, and I think that relates to a question um, really. here around um, this feels like it's favouring secondary and tertiary interventions in service system versus place-based and community-led initiatives. So it's it's that tension between measurable outcomes and holistic interventions um, well, that exists. So, yeah, that's, keen to that's a great question. It's not we're favouring it. It's just that experimental methods traditionally seem to favour those kinds of interventions. But one of the things we're curious about is can sorry, the sorry, reach of experimental methods be pushed into those areas, say place-based initiatives where in the past people haven't thought they would apply. Um, so we're open to seeing how far experimental methods can be pushed, pushed into non into areas where people don't think they're, they're amenable. And that, I think that's, and correct me if I'm wrong, Virginia and George, but that's part of the reason why we've set up this EOI process without needing any sort of evaluation knowledge or experimental expertise. That means that we can um, we can help be the judge as to whether the outcomes could be suited to um, an experimental method. So if you're unsure, apply and we'll see how we go. Yeah. Um, we hope that you don't spend too long on the EOIs and it's designed in a way that hopefully it isn't a huge burden so that if you are unsure, you can apply and we'll see what happens and we'll see what interesting, potentially measurable outcomes we can get out of this. Yeah. Um, let me have a look through. Gosh, there's so many questions and thank you to um, Kathy and George for helping me moderate as well here. I can't actually see the time, so how am I doing? Uh, we've still got 20 minutes, so... Yeah. Oh, wonderful. I'll pick up some while you're no. thinking. I thought we had until 1.15. Oh, sorry, my mistake. Yeah, <laughs> okay, so we've got five minutes to go. Lovely. Um, in terms of ethics, I know there's some questions around ethics. 
you don't need ethics at the EOI stage. As part of the application process, you will need to de detail and our evaluation advisors will work with you to make sure um, ethics, uh, required ethical pro protocols are met um, uh, or will be met if you do get the grant funding. So again, you just have to describe the process of getting ethical approval should you get the grant. You don't need that in the application stage itself. Um, so I hope that that's clear on the ethics side of it. Yeah, lovely. Um, there's two questions that relate here and I might leave this one as potentially the last one. Um, one question is, are you seeking great experimental research questions or great NFP partners? And also this um, kind of, uh, kind of ends of the spectrum, are you seeking novel applications of an experimental evaluation design or the gold standard research design? So I feel like the tensions are similar in those two yeah, questions. The, the organisation is probably the, the, of those three, the least important. The initiative is what interests us and the potential of novel applications of experimental designs in terms of the priority we would give things. Um, yeah, so we don't have a gold standard. We're interested in innovation, in novelty, in surprise, learning. We want to learn things that we don't know in terms of where experimental methods could potentially be applied in, in for initiatives relevant to our mission. Okay, I still can't see the clock, unfortunately, but I think we must be very, very close to time. So I might just close it there. We do see the rest of the questions here and we will add these to our kind of ask questions um, available on our website and in the links provided in the chat, as well as our email address, feel free to ask specific questions about your own eligibility of an initiative. Um, and thank you so much to everyone who's come. It's been probably over 200 people are here. So we're really excited to see everyone's expressions of interest. And we just want to stress that if you're unsure, apply and um hopefully we can get some really interesting and exciting evaluations out of this one yeah, George, do you have any yeah if you want to push to the next slide um oh, just to yes. emphasize um the, a lot of this information is detailed that we're in these slides so we're not going to release the all the information in these slides is laid out in the um guidelines that you'll get from the prf website um we because of the, the number of organisations, we can only really handle requests coming through the, the email there. We will update, including the questions we got here and the questions we get along the day, we will constantly update the FAQ document that is linked from our website with the responses we give so everyone can see our responses to any of the questions. So please keep going back to that, that document, the FAQ document, check it and see if your question has already been answered um, uh, before you, you send another query through to us. But feel free if you're not sure. Wonderful. Um, Virginia, do you have any other closing statements for us before we say goodbye to everyone? No, um, if in doubt, send your EOI. That's my one. Yeah, fantastic. So, uh, given you a minute and a little bit back in your day. Uh, I do acknowledge that there were a lot of questions and we didn't get to all of them, but it's wonderful to see the interest. Um, keep a look out on that FAQ list and we're really excited to see what comes up. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you. Thanks everyone. We look forward to your applications, your expressions of interest.